Hi, welcome to another video. And this is all going to be about probing with Mac 4 and the ESS. Now anybody that keeps up with the forums, recently we had another release of Build 232, which added some registers in for probing. So let's take a look just what you can do with these new registers that's been added into the plugin. Before we start, let's take a quick look at how Mac 4 and the ESS together perform a G31 probe command. So let's do a G31 X10. The Mac 4 will first instruct the ESS to do this who in turn will then move the axis, um, which is X10, and once it's either successfully hit or not hit, report back to Mac 4 that it's finished. And the only thing that Mac 4 knows is the coordinates of where the axes are at that second. It doesn't know it was a success or it was a fail. Now let's take a typical probing routine and find the center of this one, two, three block. In almost any uh, probing sc screens, you'll have a little box to enter the rough length of the X that it's gonna probe. So we'll fill this in about 80 mil. And the first thing the probing routine will do is get the Z and then move half that distance plus an overshoot to the left. It will probe that edge, record the beginning of the probe, and then it will do exactly the same the other way. It will probe the right-hand side of the block and also record that. So the distance between the first record and the second record is your centre. So let's run this same routine again, but by mistake, let's put the wrong dimensions and make it, well, make, make the part too short. So again, we'll get our Z and we'll move across. It's about here that you need to quickly press your E stop before you plunge your probe down onto a hard surface. But let's see what happens to this probe from using the registers in the ESS. As you can see from a little bit of coding, we can send our probe back to our start position and warn the user that the value they entered was well basically not enough so make it greater so let's try this again but this time we'll actually make the measurement too big And once again, because of our error, we've moved back to our start position and asked them to, well, give us a smaller amount this time. So this is all using registers. So let's have a look in the background just how to use them. So this is the code behind that button that I was using for demo purposes. I'm not gonna do a tutorial on what to type and that, I'm just gonna run you through the first part of it and it will give you a basic idea on how to use the register. Now to use the register, the first thing we need to do is get a handle to this register which is this top line here and corresponds to what is in the registry itself. 
Now the registry, you'll see it's got a probing state, probing 0, 1, 2 and 3. Now the only register you'll need to use is the probing state at the top. Because probing 0, 1, 2 and 3 are the um, information, if you like, for each one of the probes of which is being used. But when doing a G31, you can only do a G31 on one of the probes at once. So the probing state is always going to be the one that's giving you the right information back. All the variables, etc. on the top here are straightforward of what is on the screen, like my X length, Y length, um, what speed I'm going to do things, different bits and pieces like that. So let's have a look at the code. The first line is our G code execute wait, which is our first probe, which is to get our Z height. Now we're using G code execute wait because it'll allow the probe to finish before it goes to the next line. If you don't do the G code execute wait, it will go straight to that if statement whilst it's probing, which will then it won't be a minus one, so it'll go straight past that and then it will try to do the next G code execute, which Mac 4 will just give it an error as M error not now. So let's do our G31, go down to probe our Z. Now if it doesn't hit the Z, then we're going to get a minus one back from that registry. And if we do, it means we haven't struck, obviously. So we'll send a message to the user to say that we're going to abort the rest of the routine and then we'll return. Now the return here does not return just out the if statement. Your button is actually a function if you look in your screen load script. So it returns out of the whole of the button. Now if the register, if it does strike, the register is not going to be minus one. So it will go to the next G code execute wait command which we're going to raise our z by two so our z height will be at two and i'm going to set an origin so that gives me always a reference that i can send the z to that i know is above our our work stock or workpiece so now we can do our first move to the left hand side of the stock and we can do this where by moving half the size of our x length plus 10 mil i've got on mine which gets us in position for the first move we're going to make down now we're not gonna do a g1 move to move it down that's how you crash your probe we're going to use a g31 command to go down so we're going to probe downwards if it hits anything if the probe comes back with a success then we know we've hit the stock so technically we want the probe to give us an error so if we do a G code execute wait and a G31 down Z minus eight, which is basically we're, we're only moving six mil down on the stock. But if it comes back and it's not equal to an error, then physically to us, that is an error. So we can then do our G1 Z um, to our Z origin, which was 2, so we're going to go to G1Z2, and then we're also going to do a G1 to our X origin, which was our start. So now we know that the stock's been hit, enter a higher value. Now, if it doesn't, if it does go down, let's take the second example where we had an overshoot. So if 
all of this was okay and we did get a minus one back so we know we're down past our Z safe height now we can do the G code execute way and we're gonna do um, hang on, I've lost where I am at the moment X15 there we are start here so G code execute way and we're gonna probe across 15 now if it meet if it equals minus one then it's an error again isn't it so we're going to send it to our z origin and move it to our x origin again to get it out of the way if it doesn't if it does hit anything so we're going to go to our next command which we're going to move move back half a mil and then probe to our stock on the slow probe rate which i've got here You'll notice that I'm using minus one all the time to see, you know, to see if it's an error. Now, because you're using G code execute wait, you will not get any of the um, probe state probing, probe state contacted during the G code execute wait. But at the end of it, you will always get whether it's a minus one or not. So for me, it seemed so much easier just to use that minus one. So hopefully that's give, given you an idea on just how to use these registers. You don't have to do it the way I've done it, where it's all out in one spot you could make your own module with different commands but eventually i mean all of these on the screen here they all work they all function they've all got error checking on them and i can't crash my probe anymore um which honestly i have never done yet that's why you can see a homemade probe hanging from the bottom of it because i I did plunge my Z straight down into the workpiece and it curled it up. It broke the inside of my um, probe as well. And well, I just don't want that to happen again. So with the, these new registers and with a little piece of scripting behind the buttons with the registers, it shouldn't ever happen again. Well, I hope that's been of some use to somebody and i'll see you in the next video but if you have got any questions about the script or how to use them just leave it in the comments below or on one of the forums warp 9 or mac forum you'll get them answered so i'll see you in the next video